In yesterday's class, I focused on Sintona, which is the patch editor for JSON. And I started the class by just showing some little details about the double input. This is a input gadget that lets you enter values uh, with double precision. And to show a little detail about it, I connected it to a show gadget which just literally shows what it's connected to. Notice that the double changes color when you are editing it, but it doesn't actually hold and send out the value until you hit return. So I just hit the return key and the show value uh, took the value that was kicked out of the uh, double. Um, I then pointed out that the double unit has a kick input and an in input. The in actually receives a value and will kick it out. The kick just receives a kick and sends the current value out. So if you just want to send the current value out, like from a sequencer, you would connect the outputs of the various sequencer stages to the kick. And every time this double received the kick, it would send its value out. Uh, downstream. If you actually wanted to change its value, you would connect your gadget to the uh, second input here. And to show that, I'm going to just show it a fader here. So the fader, um, if it's connected to the input, will change as you are uh, changing the fader. And every value that gets in that gets set also sends a kick out. Uh, notice that you can double click on the fader and you can set the range. So let's set the minimum to, let's say zero. Let's say the default shall be uh, 10. And let's say the maximum is 110. Okay, so now I've got a range from zero to 10. If I connected this to the kick instead, you would not you would not expect any values to change. It is sending a kick. It's sending 87 out whenever this thing moves, but you can't see it. There's no visible expression of that. So that's that's uh that's the double, the fader, editing the fader, and the difference between an in and a kick. All right. Then I showed a um, sequencer that I really like, the grid 4x16. Four, four so that's four channels of sequencer that can each be edited. Um, and uh, with 16 steps. It also has a reset. So I wanted to talk about that reset for a second and what it does. Let's connect a clock to it under core basic clock. And we're going to start the sequence. All right. So I'm going to set a value here. Whenever the sequence reaches this, it's going to send a kick out of this. So we can. Um, Stop this for a second. We can put a show there. And we'll see what happens when um, the uh, when the sequencer hits this. Keep your eye here. You see that as soon as it hit that, show showed a one, which is sort of equivalent to this is the result of a kick. So whenever it hit this uh, stage, it sends out a kick. <coughs> it doesn't send a non-kick out if it's not, there's no so, sort of such thing. So you're only going to see a one come out. Um, and if there were a, uh, a voice connected to it, that voice would get a kick and you would hear the sound of the voice. All right? If you wanted a note off to be sent out, then you would uh, program the note off on a different channel send that out. Okay, so that's 
the idea there. Um, and I wanted to show you what a, what a reset did. So if I take this output and I connect it to the reset, watch what happens whenever it gets to that third stage. It resets it, right? It, it sends the sequencer back to zero. So that's a nice way to break out of patterns of 16. You can have this um, sequencer do patterns of 3 or 5 or 7 or 11 or any number up to um, 16. Um, then we wanted to sort of algorithmically uh, play with that reset. And the idea was that we wanted to um, reset probabilistically, maybe one out of one out of two times. So with a 50% chance of reset when it reaches this point. So for that, we added a math rand unit. Rand, if you roll the mouse over, you get a little um, Sintona help. It sends out a random value between zero and its in. So the in is here. We're going to use our double again. We're going to set the range to be zero to 100. OK? Um, and just to explore it outside of the context of the sequencer for a second, uh, I'm going to plug this in here. Every time I hit enter, it sends that value out in a kick. And you see that the random uh, unit generates a double precision random value somewhere between 0 and 100, not including 100. All right? So we want this to be used to um, sort of flip a coin. And half the time, we want it to uh, reset the sequencer. So for that, I'm going to use a compare. Here's the compare unit. The compare unit has an A input and a B input and three outputs. It will um, send the value and a kick out of the LT if A is less than B. It'll send a kick and the value out of this out GT um, output if a is greater than B, and it'll send it out this output if they are equal. So I'm going to edit this, and I'm going to set B equal to 50. So I'm going to com be comparing A to 50. Notice that if I roll the mouse over this port, you see its current value, which is 50. The current value of A is 0. So let's take the output of the random number generator and let's plug it into the A input and let's kick it. So now the A is 94, the B is 50, the, uh, the comparison is made and an output comes out of this unit. Let's um, plug that into a show. There's the show. Let's take the out LT and see what happens. And there we go. So the random number was 14. 14 is less than 50. And so it came out of this port. 28 is also less than 50. So it came out of the LT port. 99 was the random number here. 99 is not less than 50. So it did not come out the LT port. So this is working the way I expect. Uh, the value and a kick is going to come out of the LT port whenever A is less than 50. So let's take this output and let's plug it into the reset. Oh, uh, well, it's not kicking because uh, I am not, it's not, nothing's happening because I haven't actually kicked the random number generator. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the output of that track. We're going to plug it into the kick. 
So now every, every time it hits this stage, you'll see a new number. And there it reset. It reset because the value was 47, which is less than 50. This time the number was 92, which is not less than 50, so it didn't reset. Now it did, now it did not. Now it did, now it did not. So roughly half the time, right? And then we did a little probability exercise. We said what would happen if we did this multiple times and sort of sketch out the likelihood that it would reach every one of these uh, sequence stages. And um, I'll leave that up to you. Half the time it'll reach this and reset itself. Uh, half the time it'll reach this and continue. So when it reaches this point, half the time it'll reset and half the time it'll continue. And if it continues and it reaches this point, half the time it'll reset and half the time it will continue. So leave it sort of a, as an exercise to you to calculate what percentage of the time will you get a two-step sequence, what percentage will you get uh, whatever this number is, eight, and at what and what percentage of the time will you get uh, 14, and what percentage will you get 16. All right, then we um, worked on some synthesis, which is going to be in the next video.